Dr. Johnny Nelson of Raleigh Upper X in the Bone and Joint Surgery Clinic and this video is about healing at home after uh, ultrasound guided carpal tunnel release. So <clears throat> the main uh, purpose of this video is to help you understand, especially in this first few weeks, uh, some things we'll mention on things to expect in the first few months, but mainly in the first few weeks after ultrasound guided carpal tunnel release, uh, what to expect. Um, so the first thing to understand when you get home uh, from the um, from the hospital or the center, wherever the procedure is taking place, uh, a few things. Uh, you're going to have a wrap on your hand, and uh, this is going to be outlined in the little packet that I give you around the time of the procedure. I want you to keep that wrap on your hand for two days. Uh, the, the main question most patients have is, well, what can I do and when, right? So the most important thing to understand about ultrasound guided carpal tunnel release is that for the most part, you as the patient uh, cannot ruin any of the work that we did. Unlike procedures where we're putting in implants and fixing bones, and if you do too much too soon, you're gonna ruin the work that we did. You can't really do that with the carpal tunnel release surgery. Now, you're not gonna be quite ready for things, and there are some exceptions to that, which I will mention w when it comes to the, the, the incision itself, like you, you know, exposing it to dirty water, you can't really, you, that could ruin some of the work we did. But for the most part, in terms of your activities when you get home, um, you can't ruin any of the work or undo any of the work or, or, or really negatively impact your healing based on what you do. Now, you might not be ready for those things, and that's a different story uh, in terms of your overall healing, but the most important thing to understand from the standpoint of your activities, and those include important activities like getting dressed and making food and hygiene, toileting, all those things, you need to understand you can't ruin any of the work that we did by using your hand. So you are clear to use your hand as tolerated when you get home. Now there's some qualifications to that which I will mention here in a minute, um, but when you get home, the, the main uh, benefit of this procedure is that you will have a little wrap on your hand and that's it. It's not gonna be a splint. Um, you're not gonna have heavy restrictions on what you can do with your hands, so you can get back to activities, especially what we call ADLs, or activities of daily living, right away. So that includes dressing yourself, that includes making food, that, in, uh, that includes using a computer, that includes uh, you know, light uh, care for your home and, and uh, chores around the house and things like that. That includes dressing yourself, that includes um, uh, hygiene and toileting, all those things you can use your hand right away. So uh, it is important to understand that due to the numbing medicine we use during the surgery, you're going to have some numbness in your fingertips, okay? And because I use a special type of medicine that actually helps clamp down some of those blood vessels, um, that numbness can last sometimes 12 hours or even more. So depending on when you have it in the day, that numbness may be there that entire first day after the surgery. And it may even be there the next morning if you have it later in the day. So don't get worried about that. It will um, it will wear off um, and it, it may be slow, but it will wear off over time. It usually lasts a little longer than the numbness you get, you know, having dental work done and things like that. The other thing is a little bit of discoloration, both due to the stuff we use to clean your hand during the surgery, so that's a little bit of an orangish color sometimes, or even a discoloration, like a blanching, kind of whitish appearance to the finger. That is okay. That doesn't mean that your finger's not getting blood flow. It's also secondary to the medication I may use around the time of surgery. So just be aware of that with both the numbness uh, and the appearance of the finger. So even before the, the numbness wears off, now the good thing about the numbness is that uh, you know, it's going to control any of the discomfort you're going to have in the base of your palm after the surgery. Um, so when you get home, it might be, especially if you're able to do so, it might be helpful um, even before the numbing medicine wears off to ice the base of your hand. So take a little bag of ice and just rest that hand right on top of that. Um, keep in mind that even though the numbing medicine is still working, the process um, that later on will be interpreted by your body as painful and just uncomfortable and swelling and bruising you know, that process is still going on even though you don't feel it. So what I would encourage you to do, especially before the numbing medicine wears off, is try not to do too much with your hands, especially nothing heavy. Um, try to ice the hand. Um, some patients, I will recommend that you go ahead and start some Tylenol, just kind of scheduled every eight hours to kind of quiet down those nerve endings. If you can take ibuprofen, you can alternate it with ibuprofen as well to kind of pre-treat that. Um, so, so keep that in mind. Before the block wears off, especially, I don't want you doing anything heavy with the hand, no yard work, no repetitive cyclic loading of the hand. 
Um, the other thing is, is what to expect that first night. Most patients want to know, well, when am I going to notice that things are better? It's sometimes obviously hard to know when you have numbing medicine on board, whether or not the numbness in your hands is better, um, because often those kind of overlap. But most patients will notice the first night after surgery, that night, um, if they have a lot of symptoms where they will usually wake up and shake their hands out, they're all numb at night, they will notice that things are better. Um, if the numbing medicine is on board, again, it's a little bit different, but they will notice that first night, definitely on the second night, that those nighttime symptoms are better. So everyone's a little different in their symptom profile and what they experience with carpal tunnel syndrome. So everyone heals a little bit differently, but you can expect if you have a lot of night symptoms for your sleep to be better the first night after surgery. So uh, keep that in mind. So moving on to uh, day one after surgery. So that was the day of surgery. So day one after surgery, I still want you to keep this wrap on, right? If you, the local is wearing off and you're starting to have some aching soreness, continuing with that Tylenol, that ibuprofen around the clock is helpful. Um, if it's not very bad, you can really kind of spread those medications out. Putting a little ice on that area can still be helpful. And that ice can be helpful usually up to around five days after the surgery if, it, if you find that that's really helpful. Um, the main thing is that uh, at this point, day one after the surgery, we still want you to keep that wrap on if you can. Um, use and move your fingers, use your hand um, at, at that day one post-surgery um, and, um, and, and kind of just continue to let things settle down. So day two post-surgery, uh, things are gonna change a little bit. So on the second day after surgery, so not the day after, but the day after the day after surgery, you're able to take this wrap off of your hand. And uh, if I can find the end of this here. So when you take this wrap off, right, underneath you are going to see a little piece of white gauze, okay? That also will come off, right? And then underneath there, you'll have a little um, a bit of paper strips, okay? If possible, leave those paper strips in place. Those paper strips um, underneath, there's a little bit of glue holding that little poke incision together. If possible, try to leave those paper strips on for about five days if you can. If you want, cover it with a Band-Aid if you'd like. But the main thing that you have to understand is after you take this outer wrap off, you're able to start washing your hands. You can start taking a shower. Uh, you can start letting water run over this area. The main thing is, is try not to immerse it in any pools, lakes, tubs, you know, jacuzzis, hot tubs, things like that, no dirty water. Um, again, it's just a small poke incision and the risk is very small, but the risk is still there for infection and things like that. And you want that to heal. Typically these take about 10 days to fully heal and kind of dry over. So just keep that in mind. Now, moving on to five days after surgery. So you're at five days now, your wrap is off. You know, obviously your numbing medicine has worn off. You've probably noticed that your, your nerve symptoms are much better. Again, every patient's a little bit different, um, but you're probably sleeping better. You're not having that night pain. You're not having that pain when you shake the steering wheel. And at this stage, you probably started to notice uh, in this area, you probably have some bruising in this area and the palm down into your hand. That's a normal part of the healing process. Don't be worried about some bruising in that area. Um, that is just your body kind of breaking down that bleeding that happens during the surgery that's unavoidable um, and taking that back to your liver. liver. Um, your, your, um, uh, the, the main thing to understand is that at this point, you're probably noticing that you have a little bit of aching soreness right here, especially right here at the base of your palm, right? So that's called pillar pain. Sometimes patients say it's a little bit more back here, but mostly it's right here at the base of the palm. Um, that is also nothing unusual, and that's something that most patients have to some extent. Some patients only have a few days of it. Some patients have weeks, and, and very rarely a patient will have a few months of it. And the reason that patients have that is because when I do the surgery and I actually open up that little tunnel, the little bones that make up the, the wrist here actually have receptors in it that they feel that, that, that tunnel opening up a little bit and they send signals to the brain that, hey, this is a little different, this isn't right, you got some aching soreness right in here. So we use the term pillar pain for that. Um, understand that that's a normal part of the healing process. Every patient's a little different. Some patients struggle a little bit more than others. The other thing that that might do is that for heavy things, so I use the example of taking a really tight bottle cap off of a bottle or wringing out a dish rag, you know, real heavy things like that where you really engage those uh, grip and pinch muscles in your hand. Um, it may take a little while for that strength to come back. So it's very normal for patients to have a little bit decreased strength in their grip and their pinch. 
especially their grip uh, immediately after a carpal tunnel release. And most studies show that that all normalizes certainly uh, within the first six weeks, but certainly within um, the first several months after a carpal tunnel release. So understand that pillar pain, right? So that soreness right here at the base of your palm, sometimes extending over here to the wrist, um, uh, bruising in the first few days after surgery, and decreased grip strength can be a normal part of the healing process. Nothing to get worried about here. Um, I also wanted to mention that about five days, it is safe for you, just like it was safe before, but really at five days is where I say, okay, you can safely start to go back to heavier things. So if you do heavy yard work, if you do uh, you know, heavy weight lifting, if your job requires you know, heavy gripping, pushing, pulling, tool use, you know, it's certainly safe at five days for you to go back to that. I would say before five days, you really wanna kinda of let things calm down and simmer down a little bit, but at five days is where you can safely get back to those things. Some patients, again, before they're comfortable doing those things. And that's what I always emphasize to my patients, is that I don't want you to get frustrated uh, while it's okay for you to do those things. I don't want you to get frustrated if you can't, because everybody heals a little bit differently, and especially patients that are very young, very active, that do things like lifting weights and do things like yoga, where they load their wrists and their palms in a fully extended position, it might take them a little bit longer to get back to those activities because they just do more. They demand more from their hands and their wrists than other patients. So I tell them, listen, don't get frustrated. Everyone heals in a different timeline. You have to be patient sometimes with your hands and wrists. So moving on to 10 days to two weeks after surgery. So at this point, you really should be feeling um, the benefits and they should be real of this carpal tunnel release procedure in terms of your ability to sleep and your ability to not have to shake your hands out and do trick motions and and you should be able to start to get back to um, you know those things that are more strenuous and so some patients that knit and do things that require a lot more repetitive you know wrist motion that they're having to avoid before you should be able to slowly get back to those things and the more strenuous they are the longer they can take for that endurance and that strength to come back um, but uh, you, you should, at this point, at 10 days to two weeks, really be noticing things. At this point, those little paper strips, right, will be off of your incision. It's normal to have in that area a little bit of hardness uh, in this area, right? And that's just the scar tissue that builds up a little bit. It's also normal to have a little bit of hardness, kind of firm feeling here at the base of the palm. At 10 days, as soon as this incision is dry and basically healed, um, I tell patients to start a little scar massage. So when we do surgery, we cut through different layers of tissue. And what happens is those layers kind of tend to mat together, right? And it turns into a little bit of a hard feeling in that area. The best thing to do for that is scar massage, which tends to take those layers and loosens them up so that they can glide again relative to each other. So take a pea-sized amount of lotion, vitamin E oil, cocoa butter, whatever you have, put it right there over that little incision and with your other thumb, uh, do a nice, deep, kind of firm, if you can tolerate it, massage in a circular motion, and that helps to kind of loosen everything up. You can also go up here into the base of your palm, kind of work it up here into the base of the palm, and that'll kind of help to loosen those tissues up and decrease that sensitivity. You know, some patients do things like an exercise ball and things like that. Um, so that, that is the most important thing to understand um, at, at 10 days to two weeks. And again, at 10 days to two weeks, you should be able to tell the difference in your carpal tunnel symptoms. You also may still have some of that soreness at the base of your palm. That is not that is nothing unusual, nothing for you to worry about. Um, and, and it is also nothing unusual for you to have several weeks where your grip strength is a little bit weak. And again, some patients it's just a few days. Some patients it can be uh, six weeks or more. Um, it's hard to predict who that's gonna be. Um, and again, most patients still say they would have done it a long time ago. They should have done it a long time ago because they're so happy with the fact that they're able to sleep and that their nerves are not bothering them uh, anymore. Uh, but usually just having that insight into the healing process and hopefully this video was helpful for you to understand what to expect with ultrasound guided carpal tunnel release. So uh, from Johnny Nelson, Raleigh Upper X, Bone and Joint Surgery Clinic, I uh, hope you're well and uh, let us know if we can help in any way.